All right, so before you uh, change the channel or go to another video, uh, yeah, this is not a Blue Ridge After Dark video. It's just really late. And I figured, it, you know, it would just be a good time for uh, for me to connect with each and every single one of my coinaholics. Revolving around a topic um, that is controversial at best. Uh, I mean, really, um, there's, <laughs> there's no other way to... Uh, to describe this aspect of coin collecting that always seems to, um, um, you know, have people butt heads all the time, uh, every time it comes up. So without sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about or trying to drag a conversation longer than it actually is, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. The ultimate catch 22 in coin collecting. Yes, that's going to be uh, the topic in this video. But you're probably asking yourself, hey, God, what is it, Blue Ridge? Well, it's real simple. Cleaning your coins. Toilet scrub brush. Um, Brillo pad. Um, wheel cleaner. <laughs> you know, uh, whatever whatever your flavor is, uh, cleaning your coins with anything, with, usually with a, it's a cloth, and so, some sort of metal cleaner. Some people like to uh, use a good old strong jewelry dip with was a hydrofluoric acid or some some dangerous chemical like that. Cleaning your coins. Every time this silly topic comes up for discussion, um, there's a lot of splitting viewpoints uh, about it, okay? And um, the reason why that this whole thing is catch-22, now I figure I just go ahead and get this out of the way so that way um, uh, your your collective minds can begin to um, kind of dissect the information about this. Um, the catch-22, and this is based off of uh, someone that had talked about it, and it makes a whole lot of sense in the context of putting both of these together is that the the pros, the professionals, the people that have been in the hobby uh, would generally tell you, do not clean your coins for any reason, okay? Have you guys heard that before? Um, I hear it just about every day, you know? We, we, um, we have a live coin Q&A channel, and we also have a Facebook group. So the Facebook group, there's a lot of people that go on there. They like to share their finds. There are people that uh, post coins, some new, some old, you know, they have a, a spot of crud or poop on there, uh, or, you know, maybe it's got some old varnish or tape or residue, uh, some sort of adhesive on there. And um, the question always comes up, how do I get rid of it safely? And the crazy thing is, you know, most of the time the coin is brand spanking new. Like we're talking like a 2010 Lincoln Shield scent, or maybe that... 2005 state quarter you know with some glue or something on there uh but that question always comes up how do i get rid of this crud on here how do i clean it okay and then there's always the splitting viewpoints like i say you know uh, you should never clean a coin and then there's the other side of the crowd that says well, you know, the coin is, is only worth face value. So just go ahead and, you know, dip it in acetone, scrub it down with, you know, with a little toothbrush and, and then that's it. Be on your merry way. Um, both viewpoints certainly have merit in this conversation. But the second part of this whole cleaning coins business and what makes this a catch 22 is that no one buys your problem cleaned coins that have been harshly cleaned right it's like okay the professionals tell you don't clean your coins yet nobody will buy your clean coins on the secondary market all right so here's what we're going to do on the channel this evening without taking a whole lot of your time it's friday night by the way and i'm sure you guys on this lonely cold january evening probably have better things to do than watch this good old mug right here this uh handsome fella uh but yes we are gonna try to debunk a little bit of each so that way you could possibly you know see not only both sides but kind of make the assessment of right and wrong right which i think that's kind of lost in in um in today's society common sense right and wrong right 
And it's like, oh, yeah, psh, you know, you punch your brother. Is that the right thing to do? Or is, is it all, you know, is it bad or whatever? Um, you know, do, do, you, do you drink out of the milk carton <laughs> and you drink the rest of the milk and you put it back in the fridge? I mean, that's a common sense thing. So we're going to uh, kind of like take a look at a generalized view of everything. I figure the best, I guess, uh, resource that we could help gauge the value of clean coins, if that even is a thing on the secondary market, which in this case, it's eBay. I mean, you know, that's like bar none, the best resource for checking out realized sales of coins. And I think the, the information uh, we're about to share with each other is going to surprise the heck out of you. eBay. Guess what? I already did the legwork for you. Uh, we are in the U.S. coin section. Right over here on the left-hand side. You can barely see it. But to um, to make it easy, I had already gone to the website. I had typed in clean. Right there. Under U.S. coins. Coins and paper money. And would you looky there. How many total results popped up? 7,000. 250 so we could certainly say this one thing people are extremely extremely um uh good people <laughs> to be able to to go out and say yeah this thing's been cleaned and oftentimes a lot of the coins i would say probably 95 percent of the coins out of the 7200 or so that's highlighted just here under cleaned as a keyword search uh, are all raw Raw coins up and down the list. So, I mean, right out of the gate, the first coin that I see that's staring me right in the eye is the 1878 Carson City Morgan Silver Dollar. XF details harshly cleaned. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, we got a little value alert here. Eight bids, $79.88. I mean, there's no mistaking the fact that that coin has been cleaned at one point. So... As far as trying to remove some sort of like crud or dirt or some sort of adhesive matter that's on the coin, why do people clean coins? Okay, and we did this whole uh, idea goes back many years, long before you, I, and maybe even you know Grandma Joe and Grandpa Bob ever existed on this earth. It, you know, it goes back all the way, all the way back until probably the early 1800s. People clean coins for a couple different reasons. I guess the early, earliest reasons why is that there was a belief and you have to look or try to understand the point in time in which this happened. Okay, we're talking, let's say 1820s. Okay, that's a pretty good time in history, I would imagine. Um... The the medical field and all the breakthroughs wasn't there compared to 2021 America where, you know, we're battling through uh, a pandemic and now there's a vaccine for it. In 1820, people were worried about, you know, I guess Spanish flu and uh, all the various different types of diseases, yellow fever and all that stuff. Um, so there was kind of the... Um, uh, the idea that coins held on to some of the viruses and bacteria that made people sick. All right. So, you know, if you looked at a coin, there was a bunch of little devices, crevices, and a bunch of other great things that you may not be aware of on the coin. Um, where, you know, if you think back 200 years ago, people would say, oh my God, ew, ew, it's disgusting. It's been through 15 hands since I got it. Um, so to kind of play it safe for not only that individual, but their family, they would clean it, you know, they, they'll, they'll take soap and all sorts of different things to it. And they'll sit there and scrub it with a whole piece of cheesecloth. And then there you go. It, that's the end of that. But it, that's something that people have been doing for many generations. Okay. Many, many generations. You can even go back another hundred, 200 years. Um, people were scrubbing their coins, uh, especially the ones that were finding the coins in the ground. They pull them up and you're like, oh, there's a bunch of hard dirt on there. Let's go ahead and clean that off. And they just don't think any better. Um, enter in today's, I guess, 
coin collecting, okay? Because, you know, coin collecting has been around for a, quite a while. But let's go ahead and fast forward about 120 years. Um, a lot of collectors clean coins because they, they like the preservation of what they feel like a coin was when it was first struck. And the only way to do that is to make sure you give it a good cleaning, all right? And, and, you know, if it has kind of like a somewhat comparable presence of luster, which is a good indicator of the actual strike and the original skin of a coin is that luster. As long as that's there, it's all good, right? You know, um, so a, a collector maybe in the 1950s, um, you know, would notice because this is what silver does, right? It tarnishes. Back then, it used to be called tarnish. It was such an awful word, you know? Oh, my God, there's tarnish on Aunt Bethany's uh, uh, silverware set. We got to clean them, you know? It's a, it's always a family thing. The family would be around the table, and they would sit there and polish the bejesus out of the, their silverware, you know? Their uh, uh, everything, from their fancy gravy boat to their uh, to their other bowl that they have over here, all made from um, nine two five sterling silver. But they would sit there with the little little, little cloth, and they they put a little dab of cream on her, just you know, go to town on it, throw a little elbow grease, and then it's all good. But they also did that with their coins as well. So when you know, like I said, it's silver. Silver tarnishes, and it sometimes it takes like no time at all. You introduce a little bit of moisture, bam, the coin looks nothing like it did when it was first produced from the mint. Um, so you know, back then, as recently as 60, 70 years ago, they were cleaning the coins to get rid of what in today's standard it's kind of blasphemous to say, even to get rid of toning. Now, enter in 2020. What do we got? We have huge premiums being paid out just about daily for coins with original toning on it. The, the idea of the toning was not only was a, a beautiful kind of like artistic representation of the coin. So it kind of adds like a plus one value to a coin as it sits. Um, and that's what people love. All right, they, they like to buy a coin that's all original since the day it was birthed into commerce. <laughs> I, I don't know where I come up with these words. It's like nine o'clock already. Uh, so I'm just shooting from the hip, ladies and gentlemen. But toning is a huge premium these days. Okay, any purist coin collector will say, do not touch the coin. Don't don't sit there, stare at it, rub it with a, uh, a diaper or, you know, give it a second look. Just enjoy it for what it is. You know, if you want to get it graded, you can do that because if it's something that's been in the family for, you know, quite a while, then you probably don't want to sell it. Number one. Number two, you want to preserve it as it was when it was handed to you by a loved one or a friend. Uh, but toning is such a huge thing today, whereas 50 years ago, it wasn't. So, you know, if, if you went back in time to tell your old self, like, hey, hey, wait a minute, you're two years old. I don't know if you'll understand, but I'll tell you, do not clean your coins because the original colors, the blues, the pinks, the yellows, the russet brown potato looking color, um, that'll all be worth a lot more. You know, it's like giving an old, old, old you back in time, some investment advice. Yeah. Make sure you invest in Bitcoin and get into cryptocurrency. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Um, Google stock is going to be through the roof. Oh, by the way, there's gonna be a company called Tesla. I would probably invest a few bucks into it, especially when it was a penny stock before it went public. Um, you know, stuff like that. You would do the same with coins. But wow, boy, did I digress. That's kind of a little bit of a history lesson. So from what I've seen here, and you guys feel free to do the same thing. You go on eBay, you just simply looking down. The first three coins have bids and we're talking Morgan dollars and they will sell for a determinate amount of money. Okay. So you see all these, all these coins, two bids. You have some buy it nows in there. Here's another one. $90, 22 bits. Now, a lot of the coins we're coming across are Morgan dollars. These are actually coins that were 
um, that are more more of a bullseye to collectors as being a clean candidate. Like, you know, it's like, man, we got to get rid of all the toning. Let's get this puppy back to what they considered it to be in uh, freshly struck new condition. So as you can see, a lot of these coins have bids on them. And they're not too out of sight. You know, they have value. A lot of the coins still have value, 50, 100 bucks. Um, you know, they, these are kind of like uh, the first few, you know, the, be, the, the best match. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the higher price stuff. 1893 S, Morgan Silver Dollar. That's like the consummate key date in the Morgan series. They're asking $40,000, but get that, it's an AU details cleaned. All right, here's a double eagle gold coin. Now, granted, these haven't sold yet, but at first I want to let you guys know that there is still a lot of value, but you're going to see just by looking at the first few coins, even on that last page with all the Morgans, is that there are specific coins where it's okay and very market acceptable to buy clean coins. The good news is with clean coins is that you're able to obtain some of these at a discount compared to its problem-free um, matches, I guess. You know, coins that are the same date and all that great stuff. But as you can see, I, I see with my own two eyes a lot of coins that have value. Now, what I really want to know is have any of, the, any of these sold? And we're going to start out with the highest price. Now... There's going to be a lot of outliers. You've heard me say that word before. 1793 chain scent corrosion. It's a very clean coin that's sold for a best offer. Under 14.5. Here's a 1916 standing Liberty quarter. A quarter in which, what, 52,000 pieces were made. So it's kind of a key date. It's kind of a big deal. Um, graded in NGC, AU details cleaned. And it sold for a huge chunk of money. Here's one of those key date 1893 Morgan dollars. Okay, this is San Francisco. Sold for $8,700. Annex AU details cleaned. So uh, apparently, people have no issue with buying clean coins. But again, the outlier is these are all like rarities, key dates. You know, uh, 1838 Charlotte Gold. <laughs> I mean, you know, Charlotte Gold coins are so rare and so expensive to begin with, with such low mintage figures that you kind of take what you can find. And uh, when a coin has perceived rarity um, and they're just not encountered enough on the secondary market, then people will buy the clean coins. But again, as you can see, they're, they're select type pieces. They're low mintage, rare they're the key of the series. So here's another one, 1921D, key date, Walking Liberty, half dollar, NGCAU details clean. That sold for a few thousand dollars. So the fact that that coins aren't bought because they have problems or they're or cleaned is simply not true. Now, there is a pretty, um, pretty pretty huge uh, uh i guess counterpoint in all of this so what coins are not market acceptable at all when they're cleaned and it's one of two things it's going to be your modern coins so anything i would say in this particular instance i would say anything past like 1940 and newer cleaned have absolutely no premium so if you're sitting there wondering hey should I clean my 1987 dime? Yeah, go for it. I Nobody would care. It's not worth anything. Cleaned or uncleaned or in perfect condition anyways. It, it really isn't. Now, unless you're getting into the high top pop grade type stuff, that's a completely different story. Um, but if you're in it just for that, you're in coin collecting for the wrong reasons. But um, your ultra moderns, not worth anything cleaned. So it won't even matter if you try to dip that coin in acetone to get rid of the glue. That's fine. Or if you sit there and try to uh, uh, take a, uh, a putty knife, you know, to try and get that gunk off your quarter, by all means, go for it. Um, 
And I would say coins with, with a value of under $50 are just not worth having a discussion over. Okay. Coins that are under $50 that are cleaned, um, will be just that they are coins under $50. Uh, and the market slims down quite a bit because, you know, for a coin that cheap anyways, people will go out and buy a problem free example for just a hair more. Maybe they'll pay 60 bucks or 75. So the low dollar value type stuff really doesn't matter to a lot of people because first of all, they probably have a quite substantial mintage limit anyways. That won't really matter. You know, if a clean coin entered the market or one that is problem free, that actually has a technical grade of like AU 55, because even at that level, it's still a common coin. Uh, but then again, a lot of that has to do with actual date range. So anything like 1940, 1935 and up certainly qualifies for that as being very affordable in any condition. Now, you, you do want to take into consideration if you're getting into coin collecting. It's always easier to sell a coin that has no problems at all. Okay, so this is where I, I the, the kind of like the argument kind of ends. And we all can agree on something. If you are going to get into coin collecting to kind of build up a portfolio, something that you can be proud of, something that will be worth money, you know, 20, 25 years later on down the line when you're ready to either um you know give up collecting or if you know that you're you know your health is in bad shape and you're you know you're on your um tail end of your life or if it's something that you're going to give to your kids and your loved ones you want to make sure that you try and collect and assemble as many problem free coins as possible it's so much easier to liquidate at the end um at the end of the day, they are just coins, okay? Our, our, our life and our health and, you know, family and friends mean so much more. But, you know, this, uh, this particular investment or collectible, okay? I, I think collectibles are more of an investment and not the other way around. Um, you're just, you know, th this can be on the same level as like a 401k, or an investment, or if you're investing in crypto, or you know penny stocks, or forex, or whatever the case may be, collectibles have its have carved its own notch in the world of investments. All right, so real estate even. I mean, you can't take the real estate with you into the ground once you're all done. So you know, coins are certainly in the same way. But to make it easy to make it worth your while and to know that you've built and left a legacy, it's always wise to collect the problem free type stuff. Again, it's going to be easier. There's going to be more value and the price difference isn't a whole lot. As long as you stay away from the moderns and things like that, you're fine. So that's what I really wanted to talk, talk about. If you wanted your minds blown, you know, I'm on eBay. Um, generally, you're going to come across a lot more of the, the bigger time rarities on websites like Heritage Auctions or Great Collections or uh, Stacks Bowers. Okay, all three of those sites have a uh, archive. Go in there, type in cleaned, okay, and don't type in anything else. Take a look at the laundry list of sold sales of coins that are cleaned. And um, uh, filter it so that way it's the highest price. You're going to find a few coins that are many tens of thousands of dollars that have sold through these bigger auctions. And again, it's all it all comes down to rarity, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, you know, if a coin's rare, it's okay to find a market acceptable piece that's clean. Because obviously, <laughs> obviously they only made like 75 of that one coin. Or, you know, it's a coin so infrequently found in the secondary market that won't really matter what grade it is it's just you know i have one eureka and i've never had one like it before and that's that so that's what i wanted to talk about hopefully you guys see exactly kind of like the overall landscape of clean coins and what it's all about and um again i hopefully i was able to uh kind of squash some of the things regarding the acceptability factor of clean coins versus 
the saleability of such on the in the marketplace and hopefully i didn't bore you with just like scrolling up and down the list of <laughs> other clean coins as you can see the values are still way up there um so that's pretty much gonna do it for this evening ladies and gentlemen gentlemen ah uh, there it is that's what i wanted yeah using good old uh there it disappeared again oh well okay there it is we're back yep well after that crazy mess that's gonna do it for this one uh yeah it's getting way too late i want to thank you guys for for joining on this video uh as always like share subscribe um yeah we got some good stuff friend of the channel donated some east coast quarter rolls we are going to crack those open sometime this weekend and make it part of the blue ridge bounty because i know you guys are waiting for the next installment of that i mean hello um among a few other things pocket change market report the regular monday market report and a whole bunch more is yet to come for the new year uh that's gonna do it coinolix we're discovering together if you have questions comments we'll love to hear what you guys think about the whole clean coins versus no buy will buy them argument uh i'm sure there's gonna be a few people that will want to chime in would love to hear your guys' opinion. So you guys have a fantastic weekend. I will see you sometime this weekend. And um, yeah, we're discovering together. Okay, see you on the next coin video, guys.